It could be a variant of the Sibisti language, sir. Some of the words are familiar, and the syntax is right. The second script? I've never seen it before. Which means, thanks to the unknown alien protocols, we'll be here for a while. Back home on Lasatra, there were myths about beings named the Chiss. Take his comm link out of the circuit. We don't want the natives to eavesdrop. His blaster, spare power packs, and concussion grenades are also missing. Proud, deadly warriors. They come from the unknown regions, and they haven't been seen in hundreds of years. Uh... The pilot's blaster, power packs, and concussion grenades are missing again. It looks like everything else is still here, including the body. The tales speak of Chiss unity and military prowess. Uh, what the? Cleverness, tactics, maintaining control of the situation. Two squads of stormtroopers should be more than enough to handle one alien. What the? It is said that Chiss do ah! not make idle ghosts or promises. They found the body of one of them. All comlink channels are out, Captain Park. Enough is enough. There are 17 stormtroopers beating the bushes out there. We call them all. We are pulling out. What about the hut? The unknown alien protocols require us to study it. True, soldier. But they don't require us to study it here. Halt! Identify yourself! Once they set their minds to something, they succeed. Or die in the attempt. Welcome aboard the Venator class Star Destroyer Strike Fast. I am Captain Park. Do you speak basic? Nume Ongabi o Saibisti Ongabe Ungunen. You asked him whether he spoke Saibisti, I assume. Yes, sir. My apologies, Captain. I just thought. The stories all say that the Chiss used Saibisti in their. The what? Cadet Vanto? The Chiss. They're, uh. Well, they've always been thought of as a wild space myth. In the stories, the Chiss used Saibisti in their dealings with us. He says he understands some basic, but is more comfortable with Saibisti. Your comfort is not our priority at the moment. Our understanding is, if you speak basic, then do so. I'm Captain Park, commander of this ship. What is your name? Mithra Naroto. But I believe it would be easier for you to just call me... Thrawn. I gather you were on that planet for quite a while. I can see why you wanted so desperately to leave. I was not desperate. But my people need me. There are many dangers in the galaxy. Dangers to my people. Dangers to yours. You were shipwrecked? I was... Zishu Azwane. He says he was exiled. Why? In basic, if you can. The leaders and I disagreed. They do not accept belief in Ziboli Lusu. They don't believe in preemptive strikes. You seem to know something about his people. Not really, sir. We have stories about the Chiss. More like myths, really. They're supposed to be some of the greatest warriors who ever lived. Have you had any training in teaching or tutoring? Nothing formal, sir. I'm on track at Myanmar to become a supply officer. My family is in the shipping business, and they thought... As of this moment, you're assigned as liaison, translator, and aide to our prisoner. You'll also be coaching him in basic. He has the fundamentals, but he needs a more extensive vocabulary. Any questions? No, sir. Actually, yes, sir, I do. Why does he need to know basic? Aren't we putting him back on the planet? No. We're taking him to Coruscant. I believe the Emperor will be interested in meeting him and learning about these... Chiss. That'll be another of your duties. Learn as much as you can about him, his home world, and his people. I myself am Chiss. And never have I heard of any of my people wielding mystical powers. I told you, these stories are barely above the level of myth. But you asked to hear them. I appreciate your willingness to share. One may learn a great deal about a people by the stories they tell. And what have you learned about humans? I misspoke. Apologies. I meant to say I could learn about 
one person from the stories he chooses to tell. And what have you learned about me? That you do not wish to be here. You do not wish to act as translator and assistant. You certainly do not wish to act as interrogator. Who said I was an interrogator? You wish to return to your numbers and inventory lists. That is where your talents lie, and where you desire your path to lead. Fascinating. I suppose that being from a race of legendary warriors, you find logistics and supply beneath your dignity. Do you? Of course not, because I know better. My family has done that kind of work for three generations. I'm just doing it for the Imperial Navy now instead of for my own family. I presume you are good at it. I'm very good at it. Soon as I finish my last term, I'll be guaranteed an assignment aboard a ship. Is that what you wish? Absolutely. What I don't know is why you care about me. I'm sorry. I meant no harm. I was merely interested in you. As I am interested in everything about your empire. But why me? You never ask about Captain Park or any of the other senior officers you've met. Or even about Emperor Palpatine or the Imperial Senate. You are my translator. You hold my words in your hand. And their meanings. They are not connected to my immediate survival. You are. Captain Park, I'm told you bring me a gift. I do, your majesty. A warrior reportedly of a species known as the Chiss. If I may, your majesty, I am not merely a gift. I am also a resource. One you have never seen the like of before and may never see again. You would do well to utilize me. Would I? Certainly you are a resource of unlimited confidence. What exactly do you offer, Chis? There are threats lurking in the unknown regions that will someday find your empire. I am familiar with them. I offer my military skill to utilize in making plans to seek out and eliminate these dangers. And what exactly do you wish for my empire? A state of mutual gain. I offer my knowledge and skill to you now, in exchange for your consideration to my people in the future. You stated that your people exiled you. They are still my people. And when that future comes, what if I refuse to grant that consideration to your people? Then I will have gambled and lost. But I have until that time to convince you that my goals and yours do indeed coincide. Tell me, if you served the Empire, yet a threat arose against your people, where would your loyalties lie? Which of us would command your allegiance? If I were to serve the Empire, you would command my allegiance. What guarantee do you offer? My word is my guarantee. Perhaps your servant can speak to the strength of that vow. My servant? Perhaps I assumed incorrectly that he was your servant. Yet he always spoke highly of Chancellor Palpatine. His name is Skywalker. Anakin Skywalker. Interesting. And your name? Mithra Nerodo. So it was you. When Captain Park's message arrived, I hoped it was. Jedi Skywalker survived the war then. Sadly, he did not. I mourn his passing. He was the most cunning and equa. Courageous. He was the most cunning and courageous warrior. I had hoped to meet him again. Most courageous indeed. But before his end, he detailed for me the circumstances of your meeting and spoke highly of your abilities. So you wish to become my advisor on matters of the unknown regions? My home is lost to me. Jedi Skywalker's services are lost to you. If you wish my direct service as a replacement to his, then I am honored to offer it. There is only one favor I ask in return, your majesty. Speak, Mithra Naruto. I am still inexpert at your language. I would request that my translator be transferred to duty at my side. This is he? It is, your majesty. Cadet Eli Vanto. Captain Park, 
How much longer does Cadet Vanto have before graduation? Three standard months, Your Majesty. We were scheduled to return him and his fellow cadets to Myomar. You will return the other cadets as planned. Cadet Vanto will remain on Coruscant and finish his training at the Royal Imperial Academy. Yes, Your Majesty. I'll inform Admiral Foss of this change. You're damn lucky the Emperor's taken a fancy to you. The why, I can't guess. Foss's message said you were some kind of fancy-faced soldier already. All you need is a little orientation and imperial procedure, equipment, and terminology. That's six months for a typical raw recruit. Probably two years for cadets from the back end of nowhere. So here's the deal. Cadet Vanto has three months left before commissioning. That's how long you have to come up to speed. You fail, and you're out. The Emperor might disagree, Commandant Dean Lark. If the Emperor wants to put you in by fiat, he can do that. I hope that you prove good enough that he won't have to do that. We shall see. I guess we shall. Voss said you were to leave here as a lieutenant instead of the standard rank of ensign. There's something about getting you into command position as quickly as possible. I figure, why waste time? Congratulations, Lieutenant. Cadet Vanto can show you which way is up. He didn't give you that plaque from the goodness of his heart. Wasn't a safe time, either. Why do you think he gave it to me? There are three reactions you're gonna get when you start flashing that plaque around. One, some students and instructors will see you as Dean Lars' pet and resent you for it. What is a pet? In this case, slang for a favorite student. That group will resent you for all the privileges they assume you're getting. Two, some will see you as a failed officer who's been sent back for a refresher. That group will treat you with complete contempt. So this is not so much a gift as a weapon. A weapon against you, yeah. Reaction three, they'll think you're a joke. No, on second thought, they'll probably think you're a test. What sort of test? The really hard kind. We're not supposed to show disrespect to superior officers. We're not allowed to disrespect aliens either. Officially, at least. Alien freak! But that's not always what we really do. Do you dislike non-humans, Eli Vanto? There were a lot of different non-human groups in the Separatist movement. The Clone Wars devastated whole worlds. There's still a lot of anger. Especially... The state beyond the outer rim. There's also a lot of contempt in the core worlds towards people past the mid rim, humans and non humans alike. With me from wild space and you from the unknown regions, maybe we'll dissect your friend next. So the test for the cadets would be to see how creative they can be in their disrespect toward me, and how close to the land they can get without stepping over it. We've been invited to the metallurgy lab tonight to play cards with Spank Orber and Rosita Turi. They say they're running some corrosion tests on one of their alloy boards. Are we permitted in the metallurgy lab? Not unless we have a project we're working on. If we're caught, it means trouble. Even more so if the card game includes gambling. Gambling for credits is strictly forbidden. If we are charged with gambling, there will be also. You still don't get how it works, do you? Orbar's family is connected to the Coruscant Senator. He could probably pull anything short of straight-up murder without getting kicked out. Then we will simply refuse any offers to gamble. You're going to go, aren't you? We were invited. You may stay here if you wish. Is this what Chiss do? See a trap and just walk into it? Sometimes walking into a trap is the best strategy. There are few traps that cannot be turned against their desires. I suppose you're wondering why Spence and I asked you two here tonight. You said it was to play cards. Rosita and I wanted to pick your friend's brain on tactics and strategy. I'm having some trouble in a couple of my battle simulation classes. We figured you could help with all your military experience, if what we heard was true. I am happy to share my experience. Have you a specific question? I'm interested in the idea of traps. Take these cards. If I'm holding a King's Lane... <laughs> There's no way any of you can beat me. But you won't know that until it's too late. How would you prepare for that kind of situation? A king's lane is indeed unbeatable. But recall that there are three equivalent runs in the deck. Any of them would stagger yours. 
and lead to mutual deadlock. You have any idea what the odds are against getting two King's Lanes in the same deal? As you say, such runs are rare. More likely you hold the Prince's Lane at best. Or a cube. Or triad. In that event, what you described as a trap would more likely be termed simply... a bluff. Okay, but you're avoiding the question. I didn't ask for a dissertation on game theory. I asked what you would do if I held an unbeatable hand. There is no such hand. As I suggested earlier, I might have a King's Lane of my own. In that case, a challenge would mean mutual destruction. And that is never the preferred option. You have not yet made your challenge. It is not too late to choose another. But none would be more satisfying. As you wish. A moment, if you will. <gasps> I believe you are about to make a challenge. What's going on here? Cadets Orbar and Toroi are running a test, sir. My translator and I are observing their progress. Lieutenant! I... Very well. Carry on. There is no guaranteed winning hand, Cadet Orbar. I suggest you not forget that. Well, that was fun. So you knew he was gonna pull that? You yourself suggested his tactic this afternoon. What did you learn tonight? Anticipate your enemy. Figure out what he's doing, and then try to stay a step ahead of him. A step ahead, or to the side. When an attack comes, it is usually best to be out of the target zone, if possible. Yes, I can see how that could be handy. Hmm. Though I guess you can't always choose. Hey! Get him! If he's too injured to complete his training, he'd have no choice but to drop out. The Emperor's grand experiment will have failed, and I'd be free. Back to my life as planned. What the hell am I thinking? Hey, you! Bright eyes! Hey, what's going on here? Run! Are you alright? I'm fine. You? My injuries are minor, despite appearances. Your assistance was most timely. Thank you. Sorry I couldn't do more. I was on the wrong side of the hedge. I gather you heard them coming? There is a particular tread all predators tend to use. A balance between silence and speed. Humans use a version of this tread. Thanks for getting me out of the way. Move, move, move. I've had just enough training to know I'm not very good at this. You are welcome. And now I believe it is time for us to see Commandant Dean Lark. Alright. Cadets Obar and Turi set up the assault, you say? And did you actually hear them calling in the men who attacked you? No, sir, we didn't. But the comlink record should give you the necessary indicators. Yes, they should. Unless the assailants were an entirely separate bunch. They were not. They came across the southwest corner of the parade ground, moving with speed and stealth. The only way for them to have independently identified us was with electro binoculars. Which none of them had. Ah, uh, Obar's family has a lot to say about what happens on Coruscant. I've put up with Obar's antics for almost four years because of it. They would not risk going outside their closest circle of friends. I assume those suspects would be from the same social level as Cadets Orbar and Turoi. If you're suggesting I'm going to look the other way on this, Cadet, I strongly suggest you revise your thinking. Yes, I am concerned about the potential political fallout here, but I can't let this slide, and I won't. I'm gratified to hear that, Commandant. Let me then suggest an alternative means of action. After the attackers have been found, I recommend they be transferred to Starfighter pilot training. You don't want them to be charged? Pilot training is hardly what I'd consider a punishment. It is not intended to be. All three show the aptitude and aura necessary for fighter craft pilots. It was obvious from their method of attack. The way they moved. It was the mark of instinctive combat pilots. I believe the Starfighter program at the Skystrike Academy is equally capable to the one here at the Royal Academy. The Skystrike's far better with pilots than we are and there's no reason to tell Obar or Turi where their fellow conspirators disappeared to, is there? I would suggest that the three begin their new training... Nugi Cthulhu. Is there a word in basic for that? Yes, incommunicado. 
Can they be held incommunicado, Commandant? On Sky Strike? It's hard not to be incommunicado there. And you're right. I imagine even Obar might learn to behave himself after three of his conspirators disappear without a trace. For a human like Cadet Orbar, this uncertainty will prove a useful lesson. One can hope he will take it to his core and become a better person and officer. It's worth a shot, if you're sure you want to do it this way. Allow me to state it more strongly. If you bring the attackers to court, Marshal, I will not testify against them. Is this how you do things in the unknown regions, Cadet? Bypass the laws and regulations and get what you want through blackmail or extortion? We attempt to solve problems. This is the solution that is best for the Empire as a whole. Is that a new Lieutenant Plague Deanlark gave you at the graduation ceremony? Evidently, he forgot he had already given me one. I guess you can keep the other one as a souvenir. Or find another use for it. Interesting. I am to be second weapons officer aboard the Gozanti class cruiser Blood Crow. Nice. And you? I presume you asked for a supply officer position. I did. Good chance I got it, too. Bigger ships are always hurting for supply personnel. The Blood Crow? Aid to Lieutenant Throng. Lieutenants don't get aids ever. You set this up with the Emperor, didn't you? The Emperor does not speak to me, nor have I spoken with him since my first day on this world. This didn't happen by accident. You must have said something. What was it? The Blood Crow is scheduled for duty in border sectors where Cybisti may be spoken. I merely pointed out it might be beneficial to have two officers aboard who understand the language. If you wish, I will refuse to accept you in that position. No point. The Navy doesn't change orders just because junior officers don't like them. When you're an admiral, we'll see what you can do. Very well. I shall strive to achieve that rank as quickly as possible. Chiss do not make idle boasts or promises. Once they set their minds to something, they succeed or die in the attempt. Thrawn, you mind telling me what this junk is doing taking up space on my ship? The parts were in a scrap market we investigated for smuggler activity, Captain Rosie. They are antiques, remnants of the Clone Wars. I know what they are. Droidica, two buzz droids, half a staff. Is that part of a hyperdrive ring? These aren't antiques, Lieutenant. This is junk. And Virgilio let you bring this stuff aboard? Captain Virgilio permitted me to purchase them, yes, ma'am. As I'm not fully familiar with the technology of that era, I hoped to gain insight by studying them. And maybe get them working again? I can see brand new components on those buzz droids. You may have noticed that Virgilio isn't captain anymore. I am. And I don't care about his pet projects. I run a clean ship. I want this garbage dumped before your next watch. Clear? Yes, Captain. Although, may I offer an alternative? All property aboard an Imperial war vessel is under the control of the Commander. The buzz droids are Mark I, quite rare and apparently quite valuable to collectors. Collectors? People with more money than brains. Mark I's, you said? Well, is she making you throw it all out? Why do you assume that, Eli? I've warned Thrawn about the presence of politics within the Imperial Navy. Because Virgilio let you have it. Rossi wants to wipe every trace of him off the Blood Crow. I've seen her type. I'll bet she used her connections to get Virgilio transferred. As it happens in San Vanto, she agreed to allow me until the end of our current patrol to bring the items to full function. We saw hints of that political influence during the Orber incident at the Academy. Generous of her. I presume there's a catch. I reminded her that they would become her property. I also mentioned that the buzz droids are Mark I models. That particular model had a dunium shell protecting the brain core. It was removed in later versions. The high value of the metal meant that the cost outweighed the defensive benefits. Thrawn may believe he can get by on merit alone. 
Dad always put on extra security whenever we were lucky enough to carry a crate of dunium. Rossi is no doubt congratulating herself on putting one over on her poor, naive weapons officer. Hopefully she won't figure out that the buzz droids are already fully operational. She'll probably take them right now. But that doesn't mean politics can't directly affect him. Both of us. If I understand correctly, the most disagreeable part of retrieving the Tabana gas cargo is the dust. Yes, sir. Tends to get everywhere. Everyone hates retrieving static to that cargo. I'm sure that's where Rossi put you in charge, Lieutenant. I bet 50 credits we don't find anyone on that freighter. Automated beacon, dead in space. Odds are they got dust in the hyperdrive, couldn't fix it, and took off. If static locking has such serious disadvantages, why is it still used to transport cargo? It's really only used when transporting to Banagas, sir. The stuff's highly explosive and highly valuable. Far too valuable for the Empire to abandon, even if salvaging it is a pain. Engaging locking collar. Okay, we're set. Atmosphere inside breathing normal. Lights on low. Temperature mid-range. Gravity functional and standard. Life form readings. Nothing useful, sir. The static locking's still screwing all that up. Scrub's finished. Um, negative on any dangerous chemicals or microorganisms. We're good to go, Lieutenant. And Sanfanto, take text Lanio and Jakiv aft to the engine section. And Sanvalin and I will go forward to the bridge. Really hate derelicts, sir. Too many ghost ship stories when I was growing up. I heard my share too, Lanio. Most are just fantasy. The rest are real incidents, embellished out of all recognition. I'm sure this place will look a lot cheerier once Barlin gets to the lighting controls. Yeah, I don't think so, Jakeev. All the light in the world. Freeze! You hear me? Freeze! I swear I'll shoot you where you... <laughs> Lieutenant, may I present Neville Signy? He apparently mistook us for someone else. Did he? Whom did he mistake us for? Please believe that I thought you were... Uh, we were attacked by pirates. Who were they? Did they mention any names? No, no names, at least nothing I heard. I sort of... ran. I hid in the captain's storage locker. I know what you're thinking, I'm a coward. Should have stood with the others, fought. And then they took them, all of them. I heard someone say they were headed back to their base to get a slicer to get the ship running. What happened to the hyperdrive? I've got Lanio checking it out. Best guess is someone locked it down before the pirates could get to it. Yes, that was it. Captain Fitz locked the hyperdrive. I heard them threatening her. I heard screams. You thought we were the returning pirates? Yes, I was scared. Didn't focus on the uniforms. When I saw who you were, I guess I'm lucky you didn't shoot me for pulling a blaster. Imperial officers have better self-control than that. Orders, sir? Report the situation to Captain Rosie. Inform her I will make a thorough examination of the ship. Stay clear of the power compartment, sir. That genolog show a bad leak in the main reactor. Oh yes, don't go in there. Sorry. I should have warned you about that. Tell Captain Rosie I recommend bringing a full operational crew aboard while we attempt to restart the hyperdrive. If we are unable to do so, I recommend disengaging the static locks and transferring the Tabana cylinders to the Blood Crow. Uh... yes. Sir, I suspect that the Captain will find your suggestions a bit excessive. She may. Nevertheless, those are my recommendations. A full op crew? Is he out of his mind? Ma'am, the cargo is extremely valuable. If we can move either the ship or the Tabana... Or he could end up blowing himself to atoms. I'm not risking my crew. Anyway, it's a moot point, Ensign Vantu. A Mac Earth boss is shooting up a Hodin settlement on Moltok. We need to go stop a war from breaking out. What if Lieutenant Thrawn and I stayed behind? Possibly with one of the techs along to assist. We could try to get the ship started, maybe work on the Tabana while you settle the Maltok situation. Very well, Ensign. 
Inform Lieutenant Thrawn he can have up to three crew. Assuming he can find that many willing to volunteer. You'll stay with him regardless, of course. An important officer like that can't be without his aid. Yes, ma'am. I'll deliver your message. Barlin and Lenio will attempt to access the hyperdrive through what is known as an asymmetric back door from the breach. I can't believe Captain Rossi would just leave us. I can. Almost got it. Meanwhile, we will direct our efforts toward acquiring the Tibana gas. What in the world? Is that a buzz droid? Please tell me it isn't functional. Of course it is functional. It would hardly be of use otherwise. Okay, you've lost me. These things were designed to eat starfighters, right? They also have other uses. Tech Jaqib confirms my earlier assumptions. The static lock does indeed seal the Tebana cylinders, but only from the inside. Using the buzz droid to cut through the hole will give us access to the cylinders. Although we would drain one of the cylinders into space where we cut through. What if the vapor were to spark? Couldn't that blow up the ship? Fortunately, it will not be necessary to take such a risk. Ensign Barlin, do I hear the hyperdrive going active? Yes, sir. Got through the lock. We're just about ready to go. Does Sydney have the destination coordinates, or are we just going to take the ship to Ancyon? Neither, I'm afraid. We're good. Three with the Tabana, and two on the bridge. Perhaps Lieutenant Thrawn would be kind enough to order Barlin and Lainio to surrender quietly. What the hell? Why should I deprive them of their right and duty to defend their lives? Because if you surrender, none of you will be harmed. All we want is the Tabana. Well, and the ship too. I guess that goes without saying. Blasters down. They've surrendered, Angel. I said down. No shooting. What the hell is that? That is a lieutenant of the Imperial Navy. Now keep your weapon down. And lieutenant? Ensign Barlin. A group of pirates are on their way. They've been ordered not to harm you if you surrender without resistance. You will do so. That is an order. I trust you've decided which of your men will help me bring the Dromedar to port? Oh yeah, I got your team. Starting with me. Getting the cylinders will take time, even with Lieutenant Thrawn's idea of cutting through the hole. There's no need for you to come personally, Angel. Well, you know, now, things don't always go the way you want them to. Sometimes there are accidents. Sometimes there's trouble. Let me sweeten the pot so we avoid any... accidents. Did you notice the buzz droid in the box in the passageway? That's a Mark I Angel. Take it as a bonus. At current prices, it's probably a thousand credits for the core's dunium shell. Two hundred credits each to keep five otherwise worthless Imperials alive. Fine. Some of your men would be dead right now. Maybe even you. Remember, if I hadn't persuaded them to surrender, they would have fought. This is a rescue squad. Something like that. This is Lieutenant Thrawn. I'm Ensign Vanto. Are you Captain Fitz? Yeah. So Signy snuggled you too. You got aboard the Dromedar with a fake authorization. Then took us prisoner on this excuse of a ship. The ship's gone. The Tabana's gone. And we're done. Might as well kill us. I wouldn't give up hope quite yet. Lieutenant? Not yet, Ensign. Patience. What are we waiting for? For Signy and the others to reboard the Dromedar and jump to light speed. I'm counting out the estimated time now. You want him to get away with our ship? Be quiet, Captain. Teclanio, if we isolate the bridge, can we fly the Marauder from here? Probably. It'll take some quick rewiring, though. If the pirates are fast enough, they could disable some of the circuits before we can override them. I think we can keep them occupied. Sounds great. Except that the circuits are out there, and we're in here. I'm guessing not much longer, Captain. Inside. You once asked what I would do with the spare plug Commandant Dinog gave me at the Academy. That's a beckon call, isn't it? You're gonna remotely access a ship? But the Blood Crow is long gone. Beckon calls do not only work on ships, Ensign Vanto. Move back from the bar. <coughs> what the?
Well done. Ensign Vanto, take Jackie, Captain Fitz, take the blasters and guard this section. Ensign Barlin and take Lanio, the control system. We'll need more weapons if we're going to make a stand. That won't be necessary. The pirates still forward of the entrance hatch will not be joining us. The other sections of the ship have been opened to vacuum. What? How in the world? Lieutenant Thrawn is always prepared. And as it happens, he also owns a second buzz droid. How very unfortunate for our pirates. Lieutenant Thrawn, I believe the ship is yours. What course shall we set? Let me get this straight. You're saying you let yourself be captured? Yes, ma'am. It seemed the simplest way to find and rescue the Dromadar's crew. Damn stupid risk. Not just of your own life, but also those of my crew. It was not a serious risk. Part of my job is to anticipate the actions of our enemies. I knew Signy was a plant from the very beginning, ma'am. A crew member would have warned us about the supposed reactor leak, yet he didn't. You had a decision to make, Lieutenant. The Dromeda and its cargo, or the missing crew, who may not have even been alive. You chose the latter. Wrong choice. And because of it, lost extremely valuable cargo. But we saved the crew, ma'am and captured several pirates and their ship. None of which stacks up against even one tank of Tabana gas, let alone twenty. Until I receive a ruling from Coruscant, I've no choice but to suspend you from duty. Ma'am, you're- You will both remain on Ancyon while the Blood Crow finishes its patrol. Dismissed. My apologies, Ensign Fanto. I realize you wished to stay on the Blood Crow. However, there is a task of great importance that can be accomplished on Anson. You are no doubt wondering why you are here. I wish to offer you a deal. And you can go dump yourself straight back on Pantora. If you came here to insult us, you're wasting your time. On the contrary, I am impressed that successors of the Pirate Queen, Kana, still operate throughout the galaxy. Grand Moff Tarkin is still bitter that remnants of Kana's marauders escaped their captain's fate. Pirate Queen? We have no idea what you're talking about. A brave but useless bluff. Rest assured, I would prefer to trade you for your leader. The true irony is that your leader Angel holds much the same philosophy as I do. You surely note he left you and the remainder here to die when he went to Signy's rendezvous. Your talking path, Spit. I applaud your tenacity, but surely you can see it is of no value. Once Tarkin arrives with his ISB interrogators in hand, we will know everything. However, I offer you an alternative. I will give you and your fellow prisoners a civilian transport. It is partially derelict, but it should safely convey you from this sector before requiring repairs. In return, you will identify the system where Signy and Angel have taken the Dromedar to remove the Tibana. What guarantee do we have that you won't take the information and turn us over to Tarkin anyway? I offer my word. I also offer simple logic. You three are too young to have been any of Kana's original pirates. Tarkin's lingering vengeance will not therefore be directed specifically toward you. More importantly, I know Tarkin. He will take extra pleasure in the fact that Angel will know you were freed as a reward for betraying him. You can't know Tarkin very well if you think he ever shows mercy to anyone. Precisely. His reputation does not permit such actions. That is why I will release you on my own initiative. That is my offer. I will wait while you discuss it among yourselves. Okabunga kato songe metimbe? Kuso. Vili e kaji. I'm zwoli. A tarken e yeze. Gye koi sobe a tarken. Kudwe ke bengi a kato a angel. Azu kwen sinjeno ame itzule a kato so chinkosi. Kaaba subaha lelezi. Ofaza ilu. 
Kudwe male wambi sun gebe zon lile zon bolo. Eki so sethio sofu, so piki o bahu balahlezi in yeo duto. Bisi so yo feke katrako fatho so tswezi o enja. A mea sa shishin ku kvenili, ka venili so kvezo ka foke lefu nge pombo ku kato atarken. No men goshu ni, haba suba la leize on gesu si shei. Nge fenli ku kabe si bivili beki lole a kakoye ke gizo. A seben ge a katho be u dunle. Squalish wooden geese, eh? And seen beans or ways, eh? Get it. Hey, car you there, or thunder. Uber and Barsa Sector. A nice, quiet place to park a freighter for a while. And the insulting slang term for it is Oop Dub. Squalish is the local slang for the inhabitants. They're not known to be technological geniuses. Then we have it. And it is therefore the decision of this panel that Lieutenant Thrawn be cleared of all charges of insubordination during the Dramadon mission. Your family still engages in private shipping, does it not, Tenzai? Yes, sir. Why? Is there something you need? A knowledge of supply and demand. Dunium. Signy identified my burst droid as a Mark I. He clearly knew the value of its Dunium content. The price of Dunium has gone through the roof since the Navy started its latest shipbuilding surge. That is the tale. But there are more intriguing possibilities. Some other project. Something large and unannounced, invisible to the Senate and Finance Ministry's public records. Secret project or not, the money has to come from somewhere. Material costs, engineering, worker payments, resource transport. The bigger it is, the harder all that is to hide. I can look into it if you'd like. I would be most appreciative. I was told our new orders would be waiting for us here. Ensign Eli Vanto, a word if you please? My name is Culper. I'm an aide to Moff Gotti. You do know who Moff Gotti is, I assume. Of course. How may I be of service? An associate of His Excellency, a governor in a prestigious inner rim system, is in need of an assistant military attaché. A single word from His Excellency and the job is yours. Being an officer's aide. It's a path that leads nowhere. Interesting. Unfortunately, I'm committed to three more years of service to the Navy. And even if I were in a position to consider it, I'm not yet ready for a desk job. The attaché's office is an extension of the Imperial Navy, and this would hardly be a desk job. At best, I'd end up a lieutenant commander, serving in Thrawn's shadow. You'd certainly be promoted to lieutenant along the way, with captain soon following. Before you know it, you'd have a command in the system fleet's own defense force. Sounds intriguing. Could I really pull this off? I don't have any leadership training or experience. But still, captain of my own ship? More than simply intriguing, I would hope. And yet you seem oddly hesitant, Ensign. To be perfectly honest, an interim assignment is more than generous. What do you mean, more than generous? I mean that for a wild space person like yourself, the inner rim is an incredible move upward. I see. This is about Thrawn, isn't it? Moff Gotti doesn't care if I succeed. What he wants is for Thrawn to fail. His Excellency has no interest in what happens to a lowly senior lieutenant. Too much to hope that I was actually being cited for ability. Groomed for a prestigious post. Only, he's not a senior lieutenant anymore, is he? I'm betting he's just been promoted to captain. Fine. Yes, there are those who aren't pleased by the attention your alien friend is getting. He cost the Empire hundreds of thousands of credits and risked the Blood Crow crew to rescue some aliens, all to show off how clever he was. I'm just a tool to topple the non-elite, non-human threat to their comfortable little universe. I appreciate your honesty, Miss Culper. Please thank His Excellency for the offer, but I'm happy right where I am. Then you're a fool. He will go down someday, and anyone too close will go down with him. Good day, Ensign. Oh, and if I were you, I'd get comfortable with that title. You'll be holding it for quite some time. We're going to hit a lot more parties before Ascension Week is up, right? As many as you can handle, Jua, here. Or at least until we get thrown out. Will they all be as fancy as this one, Rinda? I feel very underdressed. You're the guests of a lowly senator's aide. You're not expected to have a thousand-credit gown. 
Look, Arinda, here's the reality. Now that price mining has a dunium vein, you need support. Protection. Protection, Uvis? Or do you mean takeover? There are a dozen ways a big mining corporation can take over a small operation like your family's. Or bleed it dry. If you would consider selling the governor another 21% of price mining. What? Absolutely not. You're not getting controlling interest. It's the only way to keep some predatory mega corporation off your back. You need to at least tell your mother about the governor's offer. As the general manager, she needs to know. Which part of no is confusing you? I think you should get off our property. Please. I own 30% of price mining. You can't just throw me out. The Price family owns 70%, and the guard droids answer to us. For now. Goodbye, Miss Price. Call me when you're ready to see reason. Father? What is it? Your mother. She's been arrested. The complaint came from the governor's office. They're charging her with embezzlement. I'm sorry, Arinda. As matters stand, I can't lift the embezzlement charge. But Senator Ranking, you have influence here. Can we at least get her out on bail? You really don't understand what this is about? This is Azadi's attempt to take over price mining. There is a way I can help your mother, but I don't think you'll like it. I can get the charges dropped, but you'll have to sign price mining over to the Empire. You're going to lose the mine, Arinda. Either to Azadi, or to the Empire. Because of the Dunium. Remember, Coruscant could take it by fiat. Right now they prefer to play nice in this part of the Outer Rim. The question is, what exactly do you want? I want to go to Coruscant. You must have a hundred good assistant positions you can offer. I want one. I assume a new Dunium vein is worth the trouble. As it happens, there's an opening in one of my citizen assistance offices. You'd be representing the interests of Lothal citizens visiting or temporarily working on Khorasan. I've never seen anything like that before. What is he, some kind of pantheron with an eye condition? Now that's just rude. Let's go over and ask. Ah, Arinda. I'd hope to run into you. This is Arinda Price, one of my aides. Miss Price, this is Colonel Wolf Yularen of the ISB, Senior Lieutenant Thrawn, a rising star in the Navy, and Ensign Eli Vanto, the Lieutenant's aide. Honored, noble sirs. Colonel Yularen was telling me about an operation the Lieutenant and Ensign were recently involved with. The Lieutenant single-handedly captured a pirate ship and saved a valuable shipment of Tibana gas. It was hardly single-handed, Colonel. Ensign Vanto is too modest about his and the other's contributions. Well, congratulations to you both. I presume you're on Coruscant for commendation? Not exactly. There are those who dislike Lieutenant Thrawn's methods. But I'm not worried. I was an admiral during the Clone Wars. I still have friends in high places and are no doubt making a few more tonight. Very perceptive, Miss Price. That's why I'm putting the Lieutenant through the Coruscant Social Grinder. I think he did a remarkable job. I want to make sure as many Senators know about it as possible. Well, I'll be sure to look into the details when I get a chance. But right now, I need Miss Price to run an errand for me. I need to get a data card to Moff Gotti. You know who he is, right? So Ranking has you working tonight, does he? Yes, Your Excellency. But I'm sure he wouldn't have interrupted you if it wasn't important. My secure datapad's in my suite. It'll just take a minute, and then you can get back to enjoying yourself. Now get yourself a drink if you'd like. A droid can fix up anything you can name. Thank you, Your Excellency. I've seen you in my office several times. Usually playing courier. Ranking must have a high opinion of you. Tell me, have you enjoyed working for him? It's been very interesting. Of course.
interesting. The most diplomatic word possible, and the most insipid. Here you go. You may take it back to him. I think that's the wrong data card, sir. <sighs> A shame, Miss Price, if you had just taken it back to him. Too bad, really. So now we'll have to do this the hard way. <coughs> that, Miss Price, is Palestine Spice. Highly prized. Highly expensive. Highly illegal. And you, my dear, have enough of it on you to guarantee that you spend the rest of your life in prison. Unless you do exactly what I say. It's good to see you understand your position here. <clears throat> Some allegations have recently arisen of financial and corporate discrepancies coming from my office. While these allegations are categorically false, I must nonetheless address them as quickly as possible. As I will be returning to Lothal for a time, I have no choice but to close several of my outlying offices. My apologies to those of you I'm no longer able to employ. I'm certain you'll find other positions soon. Miss Price, if you'd stay a moment. I hope you're proud of yourself. I didn't have any choice. He said he would have me arrested. And you honestly believed you were important enough to waste the time of a single police call on? We could have done great things together, Arinda. I'm sorry I couldn't rely on you. Whatever you were trying to do, you must not have disguised it very well. If you had warned me, I'm sorry I couldn't trust you either. Trust? Don't be a fool. There's no trust in politics. Never has been, never will be. Now get out. I'm sure you'll be very happy back on Lothal. Hey, stranger. How are you doing? Chua here, Driller. What are you doing in the pricey end of the planet? We have dinner reservations at the Pinnacle. You game? I dusted off my old martial arts stuff and got into bodyguard training. I have a job at the Yinchong Dojo now. We do civilian training, but we're also licensed to train government bodyguards. You should come in for some self-defense classes sometime. I'm still running my advocacy group. That's our real reason for visiting, actually. We have a position for an expert in mines, mining, and refining. You would be a perfect fit. I'm definitely ready to move on to something else. Where and when do I apply for the job? You just did. Seriously. I've already floated your name and the rest of the group vetted you. If you want the job, it's yours. Just so you know, it doesn't come with an apartment. But, Juahir's got a decent-sized place near the Senate building. She'd love a roommate. The hours will be long. If you're a mining expert, that means you get all the mining-related jobs. But, licensed advocacy groups have prestige, if not power. You get more notice than when you were delivering data card packets for Senator Ranking. And the pay isn't bad, either. Let us show you how much Coruscant still has to offer you. I think that's enough for today. So I hear I wasn't lying when she told me you'd be a dedicated student. Is that all she told you about me, Otlas? What in the world are they doing here? Welcome to the Yinchom Dojo, Captain Thrawn. I'm Arinda Price. We met at an Ascension Week reception in the Alessandra Hotel when you were a senior lieutenant. Certainly I remember you, Miss Price. You are an aide to Senator Domus Renking. You have a remarkable memory, Captain. I work for an advocacy group now. How may I assist you? We're here to speak to the owner. Cease! Good day, officers of the Empire. I am Hsishi, master of the Yinchon Dojo. How may I serve you? I'm Colonel Yalaran. We are doing a routine spot check of the dojos in the Federal District. I presume you have full records of this facility's government contracts and bodyguard training? Of course. I will get them for you. Before you do, we are also interested in trainers for a possible new urban combat unit. I see your students are practicing advanced stick fighting. I would like to observe your best technique firsthand. Uh. 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 Uh.
Excellent, Captain. Your style is unknown to me, but you have clearly been well trained. Thank you, Instructor. Perhaps the next time I'm on Coruscant, you will teach me some of your style. It is of your species? Yes, a Togorian form. I would welcome you as both student and teacher. And now, Colonel Yularen, I will retrieve the records you requested. You said you worked for an advocacy group. Which one? It's called Higher Skies. Thank you, Miss Price. I'm sure we will see each other again. Arinda, I'm going to have to miss our next session. My employer is back on the planet. But I may have a free evening in the office. There's a conference room with enough space for sparring practice. Where is everyone? Off to a party. I am watching the office alone tonight. The conference room is just through here. Good evening, Miss Price. It's nice to see you again. Mofgardi. Nice to see you as well. I wish you had taken me into your confidence back in the Alessandra Hotel. If you had, I could have told you that I was just as eager to take down Senator Renking as you were. Really? Your own boss? The man who engineered the Imperial takeover of my family's mining business on Lothal. I just would have preferred to destroy him without messing up my own life in the process. Your poise and confidence alone show you've come a long way since we last saw each other. I'll get straight to the point. Who hired your advocacy group to destroy me? I have no idea what you're talking about. Right after one of your people visited me, my confidential financial information was recovered from smugglers, and one of my mines was hit by raiders barely a week later. Is it Renkin, or maybe a moth? <gasps> of course. It's Tarkin, isn't it? Grand Moth Tarkin, who's wanted me gone for years. Tell me, it's him. I am sorry, Your Excellency, but I can't help you. Maybe you don't know what your boss is up to, but we really need to know for sure, don't we? From now on, you're my eyes and ears inside Higher Skies. You'll copy files and report on conversations and contracts. I'm sure that's not necessary, Your Excellency. Oh, I think it is. And you do it. While I call ISB and tell them you've came here tonight to steal confidential files. Otlis will confirm that, of course. You should welcome the chance to prove you're not playing games with me, Miss Price. Nice glasses. With your eyes covered, most people would probably assume you're a Pantoran. So I've been told. Why did you ask me to meet you? I'm in something of a situation. I think you're also dealing with some problems. I'm hoping we can help each other. I recently spoke with a high government official who thinks the advocacy group I work with is trying to destroy him. He wants me to spy on them for him. Threatened to turn me over to ISB under false charges if I refuse. Did he seem confident in that threat? Yes, in that if nothing else. He didn't realize that while threatening me, he let something important slip. During his rant, he mentioned that one of his mines had been recently attacked. I poked around a little. Dunium. Yes, a good-sized vein, which he apparently never registered. Which means he's selling it on the black market. I thought that since you're a friend of Colonel Yularen, you could quietly pass this along to him? I can give this to Colonel Yularen, but I cannot do so now. If your corrupt official was confident in his false arrest threat, I am certain he has allies among the ISB. The longer this information is with Colonel Yularen, the more likely it will become known to others. I will hold your information, but I will deliver it only when I judge the time to be right. What if I sweeten the pot? You know military tactics, but I know politics. I could help you there. I appreciate the offer, but I do not need assistance. Your aide might disagree. Ensign Vanto? In three years, you've gone from lieutenant to commander. 
yet he's still an ensign. That is a military matter. Politics should play no role. You're too good for those who dislike you to attack directly. Politics is all they have. Pressuring the High Command to keep your aid from advancing? Putting your ship last in line for repairs? I had noted that the Thunder Wasp was placed at the lowest priority. I assumed the repair ranking was based on which ships needed to be returned to patrol duty most quickly. You were half right. I have some contacts who may be able to alter that. Tell me, who does your high government official fear? I don't know that he fears anyone. Then whom does he hate? All who hold positions of power fear or hate someone or something. A threat to your enemy means potential vectors of attack for you. Miss Arinda Price, I understand you represent an advocacy group called Higher Skies. That's certainly what they think. Actually, I'm here to represent myself. And to make you the best offer you'll get today. Really? I think perhaps you overestimate your charm. Oh, I don't run on charm, Your Excellency. I run on information. Here's a sample. I'll be happy to wait while you look it over. Full credit for ingenuity. At least you aren't so obvious as to try a data thief program. Not at all. This is the one with the thief program. It's the Higher Skies brochure and agenda I was supposed to give you. Really? Who exactly are you, Miss Price? Someone who wants to make a deal that will benefit us both. The information on that card should give you a taste of what I have to offer. Most of this I already know, which proves you've successfully tapped into Governor Nasling's records. How did your employers come to create such a clever thief program? I imagine they brought in someone to help. You see, I think they're rebels. Rebels? Yes, Your Excellency. But don't worry. All they have is the merest skeleton of that data file. Just enough to keep them happy with my work. It's a double-layer thief program, crafted on the orders of ISB Colonel Wolfie Laren. The one who advised me to bring the results to you was Commander Thrawn. Very interesting. And what exactly did they expect from you in return for their help? Colonel Yolaren wanted the data, of course. Commander Thrawn asked only for a long overdue promotion for his aid. But there's still some political resistance. Resistance to a military promotion? Which of our esteemed politicians has that much time and energy to spare? Moff Gardi. Moff Gardi. I should have guessed. I have information on him, of course. He was one of the first politicians I targeted. They have a file on Tarkin. What's in it? I don't know. This one's under a different encryption than anything else I've found. But if it's like the ones I've read, it probably has a lot of secrets in it. Things Tarkin wouldn't want anyone else knowing about. Get it on a data card and bring it to my office. Now. I'll decrypt it. Let's see how high and mighty Grand Moff Tarkin is when I'm shoving his dirty little secrets down his throat. Imagine that. A high official conspiring to use illegally obtained material to topple another high official. So you offer me valuable data, as well as the satisfaction of removing Moff Gardi from the face of the galaxy. We haven't yet talked about you. What do you get out of all this? Your patronage and support. The knowledge I've helped the true powers that keep the Empire running. And I'd like the governorship of Lothal. Lothal? Not exactly the ground-shaking demand I'd expected. Why there? Governor Azadi and Senator Rankin cost my parents their mining company and forced them out of their home. Being made governor of Lothal will humiliate the first, and make it easier to take down the second. I'm afraid what you've given me isn't quite enough. A clear vision of one's goals is important in a governor, but governorships are valuable commodities. 
I thought it might not be, but this is. Everything about Lothal the Empire would ever want to know. The Empire is gathering up the Outer Rim Worlds. It might as well be as easy and painless as possible. Interesting. Some would consider that a betrayal of the home world. I prefer to think of it as loyalty to my new home world. Hey, Arinda! We doing a workout or lunch? Neither. We're making an arrest. A woman using her training position to bribe or blackmail high-level bodyguards to spy on their bosses and occasionally to try to murder them. There's just one thing I want to know. Were you ever my friend? Or was I always just a tool to you? I... Yes, I was your friend. I wasn't involved with this until after Zendarenki fired you. It showed me how corrupt the whole system was. Later, when Driller approached me... And then you figured you could use me. Poor Arinda Price, cast adrift in the swirling dregs of Coruscant. The perfect patsy. Wait, Arinda! I was your friend! I was there when you needed someone! Can't you help me now? Here's what I'll do, Jua here. Colonel Yularen is going to interrogate you. If you give him everything, he'll send you to prison instead of having you executed. I'm on the road to power now. I may be able to pull enough strings to get you out. In a few years. If not... Well, perhaps you should have chosen your friends better. It appears to be a land dispute, Ensign. On one side is the Afe clan of the native Saifari. On the other side is a group of human colonists in an enclave pressing up against Afe territory. And we are here, why? Ensign, the promotion the Thrawn promised me still hasn't happened. And I'm the only one who knows why. Moff Gotti's flunky made it very clear. For all of Thrawn's military cleverness, he has no idea how to navigate Coruscant politics. Here, tell me what you see. Shellfish. Exports have doubled over the past four months. About the time the land dispute began. The dispute has been ramping up for approximately twice that long. But the recent escalation in cross-border incidents does date from that point. The humans have precious metals to smuggle. Likely because they discovered a new vein under Afe territory. Someone calls in Night Swan. He shows them how to smuggle out their contraband inside the shellfish. You'd think someone as clever as Night Swan could come up with a new technique instead of repeating himself. Come now. Don't you recognize an invitation when you see one? We really don't know how many confrontations Night Swan and I have had over the past few months. Only those operations that he signs, as it were do we know to attribute to him. Perhaps you hadn't noticed, but there appears to be a growing number of these incidents around the Empire. There's been an increase in smuggling activity, which robs Coruscant of tariff money. Thefts of metals like Dunium have also increased at the very time the Empire is gathering these resources. There have been disputes between peoples within the Empire, which distract attention and drain military resources. Even more disturbing, there are a growing number of incidents of unrest, or open revolt. I have no doubt that Night Swan is at a hand in some of the incidents. Let us see what he has arranged for us this time. I really don't understand the purpose of this meeting, Commander. We already gave sworn statements to Coruscant. The purpose of this meeting is so that I may meet the dispute committee in person. It's not a dispute committee, it's a committee for justice. We're the ones who've been attacked, Commander, not the Safari. The reports suggest that is a matter of dispute. Hence the term I've assigned you. Not our reports. Not any report that anyone in his right mind could believe. I assure you I am in my right mind. Do you agree, Mr. Tano? Are the Safari statements untrustworthy? Ah, yes. Of course. The clan thing, you know. They just repeat what their leader says. May we ask what decision you've come to? 
I have hardly had time to make a decision, may adventure. My next task is to view the disputed territory. Fortunately, I have already received Afe Chief Joko's invitation. Mayor Benchel is an obvious choice. He's loud and passionate and did most of the talking. But I'm thinking he may be a little too loud. And the others? I'd say Scath and Pulsari. Maybe Tanu. But he seems a little too simple-minded. I can't see Night Swan trusting him with big secrets. You forget the conspiracy was already in place prior to Night Swan. He may not have had any say in the participants. Still, my congratulations, Ensign. Your skills have improved markedly. Thank you, sir. Which ones did I miss? None. Scath, Pulsary, and Tanu are indeed involved in the conspiracy. Mayor Benjel, as you have already surmised, is one of the duped. Have you any further thoughts or conclusions? Not yet, sir. There is yet time. Study further. I know not what to tell you, Commander Thrawn. The reports of my clan's folk are true and accurate. The humans have crossed the border on many occasions, stealing and attacking. Once, a home was also burned. Fortunate that it was not the clan meeting house. This structure is rich with the culture and history of the Afe clan. It is. Few of the Empire would notice. Fewer still would appreciate. Perhaps. Did you confront the attackers? On two occasions, our sentinels were attacked. Eight were injured. None were killed. Let us now examine the other side of the blade. I am told members of the Afe clan have also crossed the border into the Hollandside Enclave. Yes, we have crossed the border. Yes, we have inflicted impairment equal to our suffering. But never have we attacked the humans on their own soil. I would like to see where the first of these incursions occurred. Here where the grain was yet ripe and unharvested, is where humans first came unto Afe land. Chief Joko, did any of the Afes note anything unusual about the crops from this field? Was any grain discarded due to disease or malformation? Some plants die in all fields. This field has a history of such damage. The stunted stalks are a sign of improper development. You have a keen eye, Commander Thrawn. I offer two suggestions. First, do not hold guards for pursuit. Deploy them solely in protection of your villages. Second, I know that many of your people live in this district. I request that they leave for tonight. How long would you have us cower before an enemy? Accept disruption for our families and our young? It will end tonight. What do you conclude from the stunted plants? Heavy metal poisoning, which implies the vein of ore is near the surface. Easy credits for a group as small as our conspirators. Here they come. And there's Tanu. Locate his full record. I want a list of his areas of knowledge and expertise. His secondary schooling was in organic chemistry. Was he ever arrested or charged with a crime? No arrests for Tanu himself, but... His older brother was arrested for possession of spice. Specifically, a rare variety called Skarn that forms under grain fields. Show me the method. This is Commander Thrawn. Send the shuttles and stormtroopers I ordered to this location for prisoner retrieval. Also, add Lieutenant Gim to the TIE escort. Launchman ready. All this will be for naught if our targets don't stick around to be prisoners. You are correct, Ensign. We must make certain none of them get past us. I'll deal with the land speeders while you target the raiders. Set on stun. Understood. I'll start. You'll know when to open fire. I'll know? How will I... 
Take cover! The Raiders? He's lined them up right in my field of fire. And that close to the land speeders? They won't be able to dodge. Thrawn was right. I knew exactly when to fire. Mr. Tanu, I expect you're ready to talk. It wasn't my idea. It was Pulsary. She's the one who came up with it. They forced me. I didn't want to. A man who is forced to work against his will could easily sabotage their efforts. Yet you did not. You were the one who refined the pre-spice for smuggling. The technique is quite interesting. Fine. You caught us. Now what? Possession of pre-spice isn't illegal. He's right, sir. Pre-spice isn't an illegal substance. There are too many other products it can be turned into that are perfectly safe and legal. But the product you have created is illegal. He'll never prove it. The others are hiding all our product where no one will ever find it. Perhaps, perhaps not. One final question. Which of your group brought in Knight's One to advise you? How do you... It was Scath. She knew someone who knew him and thought he could help. And so he did. But not enough. His end will come. Yours has now arrived. What do you do? Do you attack our sovereign land at will? I have destroyed the source of the conspirators' profits. If the pre-spice had remained, the attacks would have continued. And if they did, you would have lost more than just farmland. What more? Orchards? Bridges? Lives. I see your concern for my people. But their lives and lands could have been protected in a different way. A better way. You may appeal my actions to Coruscant. They may repudiate them. Yet the damage will remain. I will appeal your actions. And I will pray we never meet again. Inside Vanto, has Coruscant responded to my report? Yes, sir. I'm afraid they're not happy with you. They're absolutely furious. Which is insane. You ended the conflict, exposed a criminal conspiracy, and kept spice off the market. What more do they want? They want a commander who follows procedures. They want a commander who will ask their advice. I have found that many admirals aspire to that rank because of a wish to exercise control and authority. Such leaders are threatened if officers of lower rank solve difficult problems without them. What about you, Commander? Why do you seek high rank? Because there are problems that must be solved. While not the most politically astute of actions, we can't argue with the results. Some cannot be solved by anyone except me. Do you know what this is about, sir? You were cleared of any misconduct in the Cyfar incident. No, but I find it interesting that you were also summoned. Try to read their faces. We are met this morning to pay special honor to two of our own. Never has any officer of the Imperial Navy achieved such success in so short a time. It is therefore with great pleasure that this board confers upon Commander Thrawn the rank of Commodore. Congratulations, Commodore Thrawn. It is also an honor and a privilege for this board to rectify a situation that has too long been allowed to stand. It is therefore with equal pleasure that we confer upon Ensign Eli Vanto the rank of Lieutenant Commander. But an Ensign jumping ahead that many ranks at once is unheard of. Congratulations, Lieutenant Commander Vanto. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. And thank you, ma'am. A fine ceremony. I'm glad I stopped by. Governor Arinda Price sends her regards and her own congratulations. I wondered if she might. 
She is well, I trust. Quite well, eagerly preparing to take on her new post. Consider this a bonus. Thank you, Your Excellency. Please thank the Governor when you next see her. I will. Now, I believe you have enemies of the Empire to deal with. Good hunting to you. Once again, congratulations, Lieutenant Commander Vanto. I trust the wait has been worth it. It has indeed, sir. And now we'd best get to our new ship. There will be a great deal to learn. Our new ship? I see you are not paying attention at the end. I thought not. We're being transferred, Commander. I am now the captain of the Imperial Star Destroyer Chimera. Admiral Thrawn, may I introduce Admiral Dural of the ISD Judicator and Admiral Kinshara of the ISD Stalwart. Admiral Thrawn of the ISD Chimera, recently assigned the 96th. Honored. And these are the governors of the relevant systems. Governor Estos of Baton, Governor Wistran of Dinash, Governor Estorn of Salmon, and Governor Price of Lethal. It is good to see you again, Governor Price. Likewise. I wish it could have been under more pleasant circumstances. Circumstances you've been called upon to deal with. Sit down, please, and we'll get right to it. Colonel Yularen? We've been noting a rise in insurgent activities in the Bataan sector for the past several months. We now have indications that some of these groups may be starting to work together. None of them are much above nuisance level, but we feel this is a trend we need to stamp out before it spreads. A question, Colonel? There are four governors here. Yet I see the commanders of only three task forces. May I ask which of our systems you're planning to ignore? The insurgents of Lothal are already being dealt with by Admiral Constantine. Governor Price requested to observe, as her system is nearby and experiencing much of the same trouble. I see. As long as Batone will be getting sufficient attention. We're going to start with your world, Governor since it seems to be the focal point for activity in the sector. If we can push back those insurgents, the other groups will wither away. Admiral Thrawn, this one will be yours. Five days ago, insurgents took command of the Imperial Garrison on Scrim Island, west of Bataan's main continent. They have at least a hundred hostages, control of the island's energy shield, and three of its ion cannons. Have you a schematic of the facility? Which of the fortified emplacements along the shoreline are the three controlled by the insurgents? Shouldn't matter. You're not going to breach above anyway. Best approach is by low altitude incursion. The shoreline defenses are more than adequate to repel even a sizable attack. <laughs> you haven't been with the Navy long, have you? With only three ion cannons, they can't defend the shoreline. A few assault boats worth of stormtroopers, and it'll be over. Perhaps. I will need more time to study the situation. There is no time. Every hour the garrison is held, the reputation of the Empire is tarnished a little more. You are to proceed at once to Bataan and release the insurgents' hold on Scrim. Destroy the island if you have to. Destroying the island would also kill the hostages. There are better ways. But they require more reconnaissance and planning. If you can't handle it, the 96th can go to some moon. <laughs> will that assignment be more to your liking? I will go wherever the Navy wishes. You disapprove of my decision. I think everyone disapproved of your decision, sir. Whatever capital you might have had with the High Command, I think you've just burned it. For the moment, that will change. Admiral Durrell has a tendency to value speed over precision. Often it leads to miscalculation. This failure will be costly, both to his task force and to him personally. 
Wonderful. Should we say something? I did say something. Admiral Durrell has not taken our advice. We must now stand aside and allow him to test his confidence. I suppose. May I ask what you're doing, sir? Studying Samani art. I need a better sense of the culture. You disapprove of my choice of transport as well. Do you have to do that? I find it tends to bypass unnecessary conversation. Admiral Thrawn for Commander Farrell. Yes, Admiral. Have we orders, sir? We do, Commander. You are to take the task force to Salmon. There's insurgent activity there that we are tasked with eliminating. You say I'm to take the task force? You won't be with us, sir? That is correct. Commander Vanto and I have an errand elsewhere. Uh, are we treading on dangerous ice here, sir? Donassius ordered us to go to Samoon. Not precisely. Fleet Admiral Donassius said the 96th was to deal with the insurgency there. No specific mention was made of you or me. Yes, sir. May I ask where we're going? To Bataan, of course. Admiral Durrell is convinced he'll have no difficulty capturing Scrim Island. I'm interested in seeing if he is correct. And if Thrawn is correct, it means more men and women hurt or killed because of the arrogance of their superiors. Looks like Admiral Durrell's got all his ships firing now. Scrim Island's energy shield is holding. Still no response from the insurgents on the top. That will soon change. By ordering fire from all of his ships, Durrell has now demonstrated their full capabilities. Shield seems to be opening. The island commander is smart. He's counterattacking after the ships close mark all their positions. And those counterattacks have perfect timing. Ion fire. Direct hits on the Judicator. Whoever's in charge down there is good. Now Durrell's just flailing. He doesn't seem to see the northern shoreline opening up. Damn! A turbo laser? Donassius never said the island had functional turbo lasers. He may not have known. An attack focused on the Judicator's portside flank opposite to the direction of the insurgent freighter. Freighter? Where? Flying eastward from the island running low and on minimal power, which renders them largely invisible to ships already under attack. And to ships that aren't under attack, but are concentrating all their attention on the ships that are. Okay, I've got them now. I fell for the trick too. It's angling away from the planet. Hail it. A tight comm signal to keep the conversation private. We're the Slipknot, and you're a weapon smuggler named Horatio Fig. So that's the real reason you put us in a captured smuggling ship. Am I buying or selling? Whichever will gain us an invitation to visit his base. Unidentified freighter, this is the freighter Slipknot. Looks like you're scorching out of here. You need any assistance? Don't even think about it, Slipknot. Not thinking it. Just trying to start a friendly conversation. If I'm right about your current cargo, there might be something I could take off your hands. Or maybe you'd like to add a little frosting to your new cake. You deal? Little of everything. Since you just hit a military base, I'm guessing you're mostly interested in weapons. You in the market, or aren't you? We might be. Boss says he's willing to talk. I'll send you the coordinates. Jump whenever you're ready. What about the Judicator? There's no aid we can render. I've already transmitted an emergency distress signal on Admiral Durrell's behalf. Our efforts are best directed elsewhere. This is your old lieutenant's plaque, isn't it? The one you modified with the remote? But why the blaster burn? You took the tunic from an officer you killed. You wear it because it intimidates people. And yes, I modified the remote for our current need. Push the top left tile when the time comes. That time being? You'll know. Hide the holdout blaster. It will look suspicious if you don't have one. The other is a sample of what you're selling. Where will you be? Engineering our escape. In the meantime, learn as much about them as you can.
Well, well. Horatio Fig, was it? An Imperial. What a surprise. And you're exactly the kind of idiot that I wear this for. Did you even notice that it doesn't fit? Or perhaps the blaster burn? You deal in antiques, too? Part stock, part insurance. You'd be surprised how many customers try to walk off without paint. Personally, I'd have blown you into dust and been done with it back on Baton. But the boss wanted to see you. So I guess you get to live a little longer. He won't regret... Signy! So you remember me from our Tabana gas encounter. It's good to see you again, Commander Vanto. And please, call me Night Swan. I'm glad that Admiral Thrawn sent you to seek me out. I always thought you'd been dealt a bad set of cards. Your presence here means you'll be spared what the rebels on Bataan are doing to him right now. Does he think Thrawn is directing that botched attack against the Bataan insurgents? Star Destroyers are pretty tough ships. The island also has only one turbo laser. He may survive. Perhaps, but it doesn't really matter. Losing his command ship is a blunder even he can't withstand. Whatever highly placed friends he has, they'll have no choice but to turn their backs on him. Though even Bataan may not be enough, considering how Thrawn happened to be admitted into the Navy in the first place. A non-human from the Unknown Regions. It would have to be someone very highly... No. Wait. Helen Brimstone. That was him. I heard about it a couple of years ago, from someone walking the through the asteroids. An unknown non-human, blue skin, red eyes, who teamed up with a Jedi General during the Clone Wars. Anakin Skywalker. Yes, General Skywalker. So you do know the story. Yes? No one else aboard the Slipknot, but listen. The engine compartment's showing a radiation leak. It looks bad. Should we track to the whole thing out of the bay before it goes critical? No need to go to such extremes, it's just a ploy. There will be another Imperial or two hiding among the baffles. Armed, of course, so be careful. I don't know whether to be flattered or insulted. You're probably wishing you tried something else. I didn't know I'd be playing to an audience who'd already put on the same show. Let's talk about you. With Ron about to leave the stage, your career will finally be out of his shadow. It has been rather in his shadow, hasn't it? I'm not worried about it. I'm a commander, with a fairly decent list of victories on my ledger. And I'd like to think I've picked up one or two friends along the way. A oh, wild space nobody who spent his entire career as a house pet to a non-human. Do you really think you have friends on Chorus? Captain? Captain, what's going on? This way! Welcome aboard, Commander. We should be clear before they realize we're not part of their crew. So that's why we're taking this one instead of ours? An unexpected bonus. My primary goal was data that might have been left uncleared on this ship's computer. Navigational records in particular that might point us to bases and supply lines. You were taken to their leader, I assume. Was it Night Swan? You knew it would be him, didn't you? I didn't know for certain, but I suspected. No one who I was up against could have been extremely useful. On the contrary. You produced a convincing performance because you were genuinely surprised. He needed to believe we'd been caught unawares. Now, time to return to Baton and see how Admiral Durrell's task force has fared. And after that, we were able to make running repairs on the engines and get out of range. I apologize for my failure, Fleet Admiral Denasius, but my next assault will succeed. Perhaps. Admiral Kinshara, your report? The insurgents at Denash have been dealt with, Fleet Admiral. However, prisoner interrogation suggests that a large portion of their forces were already transferred to Baton. Excellent. All the barks in a single hound. That much easier to roll up the lot of them. Admiral Thrawn. Someone is likewise pacified. Two enemy ships were destroyed. Four ships captured. 
A considerable array of small ops ordnance was also captured. Without your actual presence, I'm told. The action was carried out under my direction, Admiral. I see. Admiral Durrell, when will the 103rd be able to travel? We can re-engage in 30 hours, sir. I didn't ask when you could fight, Admiral. I asked when you could travel. Uh, five hours, perhaps. But with all due respect, sir... In five hours, you are to bring your task force to the Marleyvane shipyards for repair. Admiral Thrawn, you said you needed to gather intelligence on the Baton insurgents. How much time will you need? Sir, I must protest. This operation was given to me. I am perfectly capable of seeing it through. Actually, Fleet Admiral, the gathering is complete. I can eliminate them whenever you wish. Have you ever been aboard an Imperial Star Destroyer, Governor? No, I haven't had the privilege, Colonel. Governor Price, Colonel Yularen, welcome aboard. Thank you, Admiral. We appreciate you seeing us on such short notice. We understand you've pinpointed the insurgents' main baton stronghold. The Creek Path Mining and Refining Complex outside Paragosto City. Commander Vanto was able to sort out shipping vectors utilized by the insurgents. They indicate their cargoes ultimately ended up in Creek Path. And of course you're planning to go in there in force? I don't see that we have a choice, Governor. The complex's shield blocks orbital assault. Even if it did not, there are approximately 30,000 civilians within the complex's boundaries. Yes, I know. Two of those civilians are my parents. I see. Which is not necessarily all bad. Governor Price has been following events on Bataan very closely. Two days ago, she came to me with a proposal. Governor? It's very simple, Admiral. I want to go down there and reacquaint myself with my parents and their friends. And get a close-up look at the insurgents' defenses and weapons set up. That way, when you send in your forces, they won't go in blind. Depending on the setup, they might even get a crack at the shield generator. Taking that down would make this operation considerably easier. A question. When you last visited Baton, you were a senator's aide. Now you're an imperial governor. Your position and reputation may precede you. I can wear a disguise. But the simple fact is that for most people, expectations override observations. They won't expect to see Governor Price of Lothal, so they won't see her. I assume you're not going alone. Of course not. Agent Goudry, one of Colonel Yularen's ISB agents, will go with me. The story will be that they're hunting down a friend who's gotten mixed up in the mine situation. A plan that does not require her to take a side in the dispute. All for the best, since we do not know which side her parents support. I'm sure they're loyal to the Empire. Perhaps. Night Swan is quite persuasive. And even with an ISB escort, this will be a dangerous undertaking. I'll be fine. And you need the intel. These passcodes will decrypt anything they send back. Try to keep them isolated from the ship's computer. It's one of ISB's best encryptions, and we don't want it wandering around the galaxy. Understood. Commander, can you tell me who set up the positioning of the Chimera and the rest of the task force? I believe Admiral Thrawn did that himself. Why? Because it's decidedly non-standard. In fact, it's borderline insane. Your three light cruisers are not only too far from your flagship, but too far from one another. The damage they took in Daryl's failed assault means they're hardly battle ready. They can't support the Chimera, and the Chimera can't support them. A few armed ships come out of hyperspace, and you'll be down one cruiser and a whole lot of support ships. Three forces attacking in unison? All three cruisers and support clusters would be gone. Not in unison. They'd come in sequence. Chirac, then Flincer, then Tumner. They'd give the Chimera just enough time to turn its turbo lasers toward one cruiser before the next was attacked. I see you're learning to think tactically. The question is, why isn't Thrawn doing the same? 
I'm sure he is. But Yalarin is right on all counts. Unless... Thrawn arranged the freighters as bait to draw the raiders into an attack. But the bait is helpless. Any attack would instantly degenerate into a slaughter. Well, I, for one, can't see the logic in this plan. But I suppose that's his business, not mine. All I'm saying is, you should keep an eye on things. With Night Swan involved, I've had the feeling ever since that first Tabana gas encounter that the man's got an under thrawn skin. Deeper, probably, than the Admiral will ever admit. With him orchestrating this whole thing, I'm not sure how clearly Thrawn's thinking. He's thinking just fine. And whatever he does, it'll be for the good of the Empire. I hope so. Keep an eye on him anyway. This is quite unexpected. Not that your mother and I aren't glad to see you, Arinda, but why the hair? And the islands? I'm here very unofficially, hence the disguise. Aside from making sure you're safe, we need your help. A friend of Matai's is inside the mine area. We need your help to find him. He's just the type to jump headfirst into an insurgency without thinking. I need to get him out of there before the whole thing goes up. Those people in the mines are heroes, fighting for our rights against a repressive and dangerous government. I think you may be painting with too wide a brush. The Empire is quite multifaceted. Maybe on Coruscant it is. Maybe on Lothal. Not on Bataan. Here the Governor and his friends are corrupt. Utterly corrupt. And the galaxy needs to hear about it. There are Imperial procedures for dealing with corrupt local politicians, Mother. I'll look into it when I get back to Lothal. I can petition the Senate. Possibly even the Emperor. But that won't be soon enough to help my friend. I've heard too many stories about people being press-ganged by insurgent groups. Fine, I'll take you. You need me to get through the cordon. What's your friend's name? I don't know what name he's using here. He hasn't always been on the right side of the law. But he's a weapons electronics guy, so that should give us a clue as to where he's working. We'll go in and take a quick look around. But if and when they tell us to leave, we leave, clear? Clear. The irony is that the governor has himself to blame for the fact that we've got a shield at all. Creek Path's owner pleaded with him for some protection, but he wouldn't give us any of his troops. So instead he found a used DSS-02 regional shield and had it set up. Huh. I'd have thought the operators would have tried to sabotage it before you kicked him out. Before the insurgents kicked them out, I might agree with some of their grievances, but I'm not with them. From what I understand, they were escorted off the premises before they even knew what was... Elenia, is something wrong? Talmor? I don't... I don't feel well. I think it was... I, I think it's something in the air. Can you come home? I, I need you and Arinda to come home. Yes, of course. Arinda? Here, sorry. I saw a group of men and wanted to check them out. None matched Matai's description. Is something wrong? Your mother's taken ill. We have to go home right away. W wait a minute. I need to find my friend. Can't I stay? I promise I won't get in anyone's way. I don't think... That's a good idea. You can find your way back to the house, right? Sure. You two go on. I'll be fine. Are you all right, Elenia? You sound terrible. What in the world are you talking about? That was me, I'm afraid. I needed to get back here, and I needed to get away from Matai. This was the simplest way to do it. Look, there's going to be a battle soon. A big one. You need to leave before it begins. Start packing. Arinda, Arinda, it's okay. The governor wouldn't dare attack the man. There's an Imperial task force overhead with orders to neutralize the insurgents on Bataan. That means Creek Path. So you need to gather up everything you can't live without. Arinda, please. There's no please, Mother. You need to go pack, and you need to pack now. Come on, Elenia. Do as she says. What about our friends? What about the men and women we work with in the mine? I'm not here for them. I'm here for you. This is Admiral Thrawn aboard the ISD Chimera. 
I wish to speak to Night Swan. Excuse me? This is Admiral Thrawn. Please inform Night Swan that I wish to speak with him. This is Night Swan. How did you get this frequency? It was one of many contained in the records of the freighter Commander Vanto and I took from your ship. Careless of whoever flew that ship last. With anyone else, I would have expected an ultimatum, or at least some gloating. But neither strikes me as your style. Why did you call? I wish to speak with you, face to face, with no barriers between us. I expected you would wait until my arrival, Night Swan. I got bored, Admiral Thrawn. Besides, I was curious to see if you told me the truth about coming alone. You are no use to me, dead or captured. So you said. Though I like to point out that I was the one who saved your life during the Dromedar hijacking. I persuaded Angel to take that buzz droid back aboard his ship. I suspected you had a plan for it. Thank you. Allow me to point out that had you not, I had a second droid already moored to the hull. Ah, of course you did. So much for playing the card of appealing to your sense of obligation. I find obligations are not a stable basis for a relationship. Perhaps it is different in the mining guild. Not really. How did you know about the guild? You noticed the disappearance of Dunia more quickly than one not familiar with the metal marketplace. I presume you saw the confusion in the Empire's metal markets and broke from the guild to manipulate it for your own gain. In part, I worked with citizens who had been hurt by the Empire and couldn't afford the justice they deserved. Smuggling metals like Dunium was the most efficient way to generate that money for all of us. For a while I straddled the line, mostly helping innocents, working with occasional insurgents. But then I started hearing rumors. Something nasty the Empire was up to out in the middle of nowhere. The project that was sucking up all the Dunium, Iridium, and other metals being yanked out of the markets. I heard about whole planets being strip-mined. Private operations being taken over by the Empire, I started getting curious. Sometimes it's a very bad thing to be curious. It is never wrong to be curious, but it can sometimes be dangerous. This project you seek, I too have become interested in what the Empire has planned. What I don't understand is why you still serve the Empire. Can't you see the evil you're helping to perpetuate? There are things in this galaxy far more evil than the Empire, and far more dangerous to all living beings. I sought out the Empire to discover if they would serve better as allies, or as easier prey than my people. I dug to get your Royal Imperial Academy records. The story I heard was that you were rescued from exile. It was intended to so appear. But that was not the reality. The encampment was designed to appear as if I had been abandoned by my fellow Chiss for years. In truth, I was only there a few months. The plan was to lure an Imperial ship to the planet, use my tactical skills to slip aboard, and be taken to Coruscant. I had hoped merely to persuade the Emperor to allow me to study the Empire's political and military structure. His offer to make me an officer in the Imperial Navy gave me the opportunity to learn much more. I'm afraid that uniform has blinded you to reality, especially if you think I would abandon my people and my cause and join you in your fight for a better Empire. You are correct in that I asked you here because I wish to offer you a position. But after your activities, you would never be accepted by the Navy. The role I have in mind for you is not with the Empire, but with the Chiss Ascendancy. You're kidding. All of them? All of them. And if I find that other box before you drag us out of here, there'll be ten more. They're the records of your childhood, Arinda. Your life, everything up until you left for Coruscant. You've got 15 minutes, and don't forget to grab some of your own. There you are, Price. And here I thought you'd be at the hospital, your mother being deathly ill and all. We had her put her feet up, and she started feeling better, Agent Kudry. I figured since we were here, I'd get them ready to evacuate. 
Sorry, sweetheart. This isn't a rescue mission. It's a search and destroy. Luckily for the Empire, I didn't need you. I have an explosives cache and the shield generator, both set to my comm channel and ready to blow. We can still take my parents with us. They won't slow us down. No. A party draws attention we can't afford. I'm a governor. I've got the blaster. What? <coughs> I'm not leaving without them. Let them die here with the rest of these outer rings. <coughs> ah! Uh, Rinda, what? He was going to leave you and father behind. Get your bags, we're leaving now. You want? Admiral, that's crazy. Is a human among the Chiss more implausible than a Chiss among humans? It would offer you the chance to stand against forces far more evil than you face now. And what of the people fighting your lesser evil right now? What would happen to them? The people of Baton are Imperial resources. A wise commander never wastes resources without need. If the insurgents disperse, leaving their weapons behind, this will be the end. Until you leave, even if Governor Restos honored your deal, it still wouldn't last. The injustices against the people are too great, the arrogance of those in power too deep. Sooner or later they would rise up again. Only this time they would have no one to lead them. They would be cut down like grain in a field, their voices silenced before they were ever heard. So you will stay? Perhaps we ultimately seek the same end, but we see vastly different roads to that end. I have no choice. We have the same sense of duty, Admiral Thrawn. Good evening, Admiral, and thank you for your time. We've been distant adversaries for a long time. My curiosity is now satisfied. Is it? There is still the matter of the Empire's new project. If I were to aid you in your search for answers, would it persuade you to join me? What exactly do you know? I have no direct knowledge, but I too have gathered some of the pieces of the puzzle to myself. I may also know where the main worksite is located. And if you find it, what then? What do you do? You serve the Empire and this project. Whatever it is, represents a great deal of Imperial resources. I do indeed serve the Empire. But I also serve the causes of the Chis Ascendancy. If I deem this project to be a threat against my people, I might find it necessary to reconsider my path. On one hand, we have a puzzle and a fear of what the Empire is planning. On the other hand, I have real flesh-and-blood people to protect in the here and now. I'm sorry. I have read about the Night Swan, how it sings only as night is falling. If you do not expect your stand to succeed, why not come with me now? A man must do what he must, Admiral Thrawn, even if his stand is against the fall of eternal night. Insurgent Guard. Let me do the talking. Halt! Where do you think you're going? I need to get my parents out of here. Mother's not well. I need to get her to- Let's see some IDs. All of you. That won't be necessary. I'm Talmor Pro- <laughs> What happened to- You must have caught some shrapnel. Come on. Inform the ground commanders that they are to ready their troops. If we have not heard from Governor Price and Agent Goodry by then, we will assume their mission has failed. We will proceed accordingly. Yes, sir. Prepare the Chimera for combat, Commander Farrow. I expect enemy forces to appear shortly. Yes, sir. The ship and records we obtained from the captured base indicate 30 mid-sized ships. They could be- Incoming. 10 ships on Vector 110 by 80. Baton insurgents. Two more groups incoming, eleven vessels each. Admiral, they're targeting the cruisers. I see them. Then do something, Thrawn. Those cruisers are defenseless, and once those ships cut their way through them, the Camaro will be alone and outnumbered. Signal the ground commanders. The units on the west and north may open fire on the Creek Path insurgents, but they are to remain in position until the shield is down, or until I give further orders. Yes, sir. Sir, the ships? Yes, Commander, the ships. Let us now discover how well I have read our opponent. And whether we're about to die. 
Yes. And whether we are about to die. I'm Arinda Price. I'm here on special assignment from Colonel Yularen. We need transport off planet. Governor Arinda Price? Oh, about time we heard from you. The Colonel's been worried. You better give him a call. The team's already gone in. What team? The rescue team. Heading to your parents' house. These them? Yes, these are my parents. Wasn't there supposed to be someone with you? We got separated. Where's your HQ? I need to get my parents some proper care. We'll get you to HQ right away, Governor. The rescue team can take the life transport out. What in the world? Why aren't they firing? The attackers were never going to fire on defenseless cruisers, Commander Faro. Remember, we face Night Swan, the same man who insisted that the Dromedar's crew be held captive by pirates who wanted to kill them. You knew he would never order his forces to fire on ships that could not fire back. And now that they're drawn out, you'll send the cruisers away? So we can finally fight back? I am not sending them away. Patience, Commander. Admiral, are those...? They are indeed, Commander. TIE Fighters. A full squadron in each cruiser. Courtesy of the Judicator. Brought into the Baton system concealed inside the repair patches. Waiting for the attacking ships to pass them by. Yes. And now, thanks to Night Swan's strategy, they are perfectly positioned behind their targets. This is the first resident. I saw some horrendous things during the Clone Wars. This ranks right up there with the worst of them. As you can see, the number of civilian deaths far exceeded the number of insurgents killed. Governor Price, you are the only one of us who was in Creek Path before it was destroyed. You do not know how the explosives came to be detonated before the planetary shield generator. I went to my parents' house to get them ready to leave. We waited there for Agent Goudry. He didn't return by the time we'd agreed on, so we left. I can only assume he was trapped by the insurgents. He must have triggered the charges rather than allow them to take him alive. The Senate has already ordered a full inquiry, but I doubt their investigation will find anything useful. The inner section of the complex where the explosions took place was reduced pretty much to dust. Your report, Colonel said that the death of Night Swan was confirmed. Yes, sir. His body was found and identified in one of the outer areas, where the damage from the explosion was less severe. Overall, the Emperor is pleased with the outcome. Very pleased indeed. I expect he'll find a tangible way to show his thanks. Governor Price, a word with you in private, if I may. A question, Admiral? A statement, Governor. No. That's not how you bring an accusation against a powerful member of the Imperial government. For all your tactical skill, Admiral, you still don't know the first thing about dealing with politicians. Do I not? No. Your entire career has been one of military triumphs and political bumps. Every one of those bumps has required someone with political skill to get you out of it. You clearly suspect me of knowing more about what happened on Baton. Fine, suspect away. But don't lose track of the fact that you need me. In what way? To smooth out your future political bumps. And trust me, there will be more bumps. You're a successful admiral. That makes you a target for people who want some of your power for themselves. People such as you? <laughs> At least you've learned some political lessons. But no. I don't want to take your power away. I merely want to direct it along a line that will do us both the most good. 
The fact is, I have an insurgent situation on Lothal. I've had some discussions with Grand Moff Tarkin. He's not happy that our local rebels are hitting other places in the region. He wants me to find a solution. I think that solution is you. And the benefit of this assistance would be your political guidance. If that isn't valuable enough, consider the gain to your prestige from another victory or two. My sources tell me the Seventh is going to need a new fleet admiral soon. They're sent to all the major conflicts. Do you think there's anyone else in the Imperial Navy who cares as much about limiting casualties as you? You make interesting points. I will consider your proposal. Do that. In the meantime, go have your meeting with the Emperor. Smile and thank him for whatever accolades or trinkets he heaps on you. Congratulations, Grand Admiral. An excellent day for you. An excellent day for my empire. Though I fear many will not see it in that way. I will endeavor to set their hearts and minds at ease. But I must first calm my own heart and mind. Must you now? Very well. Speak your mind, Grand Admiral. Tell me about the Death Star. When and how did you hear of that project? I learned the name from unguarded dispatches. I deduced the size and power from resource allocations. I now wish to learn from you its purpose. Your thoughts are laid bare, Mithra Norodo. Allow me to allay your fears. I have no designs against the Chiss, nor do I begrudge you the defense of your people. I would also warn against diverting too many of the Empire's resources from a flexible navy. Massive projects such as this can bring the Imperial Presence to only one system at a time. There will soon be no need to spread the Imperial Presence across the galaxy. Once the Death Star is fully operational, its very existence will suppress all opposition. And so... Good. Ah, Lord Vader. Come join us. I don't believe you have met Darth Vader, Grand Admiral Thrawn. I greet you, Lord Vader. I have heard a great deal about you. I am pleased we have finally met. As am I. Ngongai, Ngonga ila vanto, Ngolithe kono omombongilio ivilia mithra nulo odo, Akule wea katho Ngonga se ngoso benzo se ke kala o aka feke meze chis. Soye kwe makile a elevanto, eki sofandi nde uni a me ikonosoli. Grand Admiral Thrall. Grand Admiral? The Emperor recently promoted me after my victory at Batone. Civilian casualties outnumbered the insurgents at the time. Acceptable margins, Agent Callus, for there are no longer rebels in that sector. <laughs>